The best way the devil deceives and confuses us is to steal our identity. Growing up, my identity was defined by my mother. I was taught at an early age that I had to work to prove my worth and that my worth was tied to my identity as a future nya or daughter-in-law. My mother instilled in me a strong work ethic to be vigilant and anticipate the needs of others before spoken. Normal conversations and scoldings included, do this to be a good nya, and, or if you don't do this, you won't be a good nya. From my mother's jurisdiction, she instructed and defined my identity. She did not, however, teach me how to value or be kind to myself or how to pick and choose a spouse. She taught me to sacrifice, to be an obedient and good girl in hopes that one day a husband and his family would see my sacrifice and love me. This March, I moved out on my own and during the first few weeks, I experienced lots of paranormal activity at night. Concerned, I reached out to uh, Ping Fu and Greg and even after Ping Fu led me in a prayer over my home, the activity per still persisted. That Sunday, I asked her if perhaps it wasn't the apartment that was the problem, but me that was the problem. Later that afternoon, we went through the deliverance process and I felt immense freedom and joy. Then in April, I went through the intimate process of the soul care book with the women in my life group. Together, we learned about our life experiences and and family, and how that impacts our faith and spiritual journey. In June, I attended the Soul Care Conference, and by then, I knew something was off inside. I had fallen back into sinful patterns, old ways of thinking and coping, and relying on my own strength. During the conference, Rob Reamer said that oftentimes Christians seek after the hands of God, his works, and what um, he can do for them, than seeking God's face similar to how uh, when Moses went from hiding from God to seeking and seeing God face to face. Rob informed that uh, we, did, we don't get to know God through his hands, but by spending time with him, nose to nose, eyes to eyes, and face to face. At the conference, I wanted to make sure that all the spiritual junk was truly out. So I waited patiently for the final day, which was deliverance. Unfortunately, I couldn't be fully delivered that day, and I was very disappointed and discouraged. Instead, I needed another day to reschedule. By late June, I had my second deliverance, and all curses, strongholds, soul ties, sins, generational curses and offenses, and words spoken over me were banished through repentance and confession, <laughs> and through the blood of Christ. At one point in my deliverance, I felt the presence of a being that was akin to a sister. She had, I had been with this identity for so long. She had grown up with me as if she was a part of me, like a twin. I knew her well. You see, as a daughter, I was not prized unless I earned something. I was not told I was special or beautiful. I was not admired or adored by my parents. And if you don't get that from your parents, then you seek that outside of the home. All of those things were reserved for a spouse. So what, so what happens when I sacrifice my all in a marriage, but there is abuse? And finally, divorce. This identity of a nya had to be abandoned and cast aside to survive. Where is my identity now? During my deliverance, this compounded identity of working to be considered worthy and being a nya came to the light. This being was palpable. She had been with me since the age of four, but she kept me confined and trapped, living in the continuous cycles of validation and dependence on men and inner dissatisfaction and turmoil. I believed in my mom's words that she had spoken over me, that I had to work uh, to contribute to be valuable, and if I wasn't someone's wife and ya, I wasn't living to my calling, my identity, my womanhood, and my potential. Together with the deliverance team, we brought those lies to Jesus, and I had a divine intervention. When we live with cultural norms for such a long time, we don't see that sometimes it's a covert identity theft. This was the one thing that my mother continuously spoke over me and groomed me to be since childhood to adulthood. My name is not Nya, and I don't have to work 
and sacrifice to be valued by God and society. For, for, for you created me. For you created my inmost being. You knit me in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Psalms 139, 14. My name is Dow, and I am, fully, I am fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God. My identity is complete as God's daughter, his princess. He loves and adores me. He is affectionate towards me, and he holds me close to him. He is proud of me, and he delights in me. God is my mother, God is my father, and he is my bridegroom. I am in him as he is in me. Soul care is not a one and done process. It's a continuous journey. Uh, and some of the things are repentance, confession, being in community, casting out demons and asking the Holy Spirit to fill me and live through me. I've learned a deeper intimacy with God and I sit with him face to face every day. Sometimes it's not face to face, it's like side to side, but you know, it's still in the presence of God. Um, I invite him in my thinking, in my internal processing, in my feelings, in my reactions and uh, responses, in my conflicts, and in my dreams. Today, if you feel an inkling of interest or a positive thought about the soul care process or deliverance, I encourage you to talk to Peng Fo or Pastor Greg. That nudging is the Holy Spirit egging you on, encouraging you to reach out. Thank you for listening. <laughs>